Uh, thank you all for coming out this afternoon. Uh, we, uh, I am flanked here today by our elections director, Sean Sheehan, who looks remarkably calm um, despite all of the calls and uh, emails that he's been answering for the last many months and up until 10 minutes ago. <laughs> uh, and Deputy Secretary Lauren Hibbert, who has uh, similarly been all hands on deck with the elections team getting ready for the big day. Um, I want to start by giving a few, uh, uh, a few last minute tips for voters across Vermont. Uh, voters should know that your polls are open until 7 p.m. Um, if you would like to check to see whether your ballot has been received, maybe the ballot that you mailed or the ballot that you put in your community's drop box, uh, you can go to your My Voter page at mvp.vermont.gov, check to see that your ballot is received. Uh, you should know, though, that there are still almost 400 ballots out there that were sent back to clerks uh, that were marked defective, possibly because the, the insert envelope wasn't signed or dated correctly. Uh, those are errors that you can fix uh, automatically on your My Voter page, uh, or you can stop by your polling place and talk with your clerk uh, to make sure that your, uh, your defective ballot is cured before 7 p.m. today. Um, same day voter registration is available in Vermont. Uh, to expedite that process, you should take with you uh, either your current uh, driver's license that shows you living in that town or a piece of mail that uh, demonstrates to your clerk that you live in that community. You can register to vote and get your ballot uh, with same day voter registration. If you were mailed a ballot, please, BYOB, bring your own ballot. Uh, clerks are concerned about the possibility of running low on, uh, on the extra ballot supply that was sent to them. Um, and so it's a good idea to bring your own ballot. It's somewhere in your kitchen, I can almost guarantee. Uh, your clerk has been working long hours for many, many weeks and probably got in this morning very, very early. Uh, and is looking at probably a very long evening. So when you go to your polling place, when you see your clerk, please tell them thank you for the hard work that they're doing uh, to help ensure that every eligible voter can cast their ballot today. Uh, a little status report on where we are right now. Um, as of uh, midday today, we had 220,000 Vermonters having uh, already cast their ballot. And uh, as of, uh, we've got, the trend is, uh, is tracking just as it did in previous elections. Uh, we're looking at between 60 and 75% of Vermonters probably voting early, um, and the remainder of folks voting uh, during the day today. Uh, total voter turnout, of course, uh, we don't know what that's going to be, um, but we expect it to be brisk because the reports that I'm hearing from clerks across the state are that uh, traffic has been steady. Uh, they have not had a lot of downtimes during the polling today, and uh, there's a, a, a great deal of energy out there among Vermonters uh, wanting to cast their ballot. Uh, spirits are high. Uh, Vermonters are happy to be out there doing their civic duty and your clerks are on deck and ready to make this day go smoothly. Uh, I think it's helpful though for us to put this uh, day in a bit of a national context. Uh, we have been in continuous communication with our federal law enforcement partners. Um, they have uh, warned us of the types of incidents that we might expect during the day today, and those are things that we have been planning uh, and preparing and drilling for uh, for weeks and weeks. Uh, we could expect uh, DDoS attacks, uh, bomb threats, swatting of public officials. Uh, we are told that we should expect that foreign actors are attempting to infiltrate uh, systems um, to cause delay or disruption or to cause the perception of uh, a problem. Please remember that uh, ev in every state in this country, your elections workers are prepared for these contingencies. Uh, they have backup plans in place. Um, and uh, a momentary disruption does not necessarily impact the outcome of uh, the vote tallying today. We have been preparing for all of these contingencies and more. 
Um, and I'm happy to say that in Vermont, we have not yet seen any of these kinds of disruptions today. Um, and we certainly hope that we get through 7 p.m. Uh, with a similar report. Uh, what to expect for the remainder of today? Uh, polls are going to close at 7 p.m. Uh, we expect preliminary results to start uh, rolling in uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, a delay in those results does not indicate that there is something going wrong. A delay in those results simply means uh, that, that the clerk is double checking, uh, checking to see that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Um, and you should know that these results that you see on the election night reporting page on the Secretary of State's website are preliminary results. The clerks have 48 hours after today to get us uh, their final tallies where they will make sure that all of the write-in votes have been uh, properly accounted for um, and deciphered because sometimes handwriting isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Um, but just remember that uh, what you see tonight is your preliminary results. Um, we expect that Vermont's contests, most of them, will be called relatively early. Um, Again, this is just a preliminary. This is a determination made uh, in large part by media uh, and certainly not uh, by local clerks or by our office. Uh, you know you can get election results uh, at electionresults.vermont.gov. Um, and for those of you who are uh, nerding out on all of the details of this election, you can also find elections archives there to compare turnout uh, in this election to turnout in previous elections. Uh, so there's plenty there to play with while we wait for the results to come in from across the country. Uh, many clerks and boards of civil authority have been at this since early this morning and will be at their polling place until late tonight. Please make sure that you thank your town or city clerk. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, about what's going to happen over the next couple of days. Um, I think it's very important for Vermonters to understand that in uh, other parts of the country, in other cities and states and precincts, uh, elections workers, like they do here in Vermont, prior prioritize accuracy over speed. And the vote, vote counting and tallying that is being done over the coming days is a normal part of the process. We shouldn't expect to have uh, a, a, an outcome on the presidential race uh, called this evening uh, because we know that uh, it's very important that voters know that every eligible vote was counted. Um, I want to thank our town and city clerks myself for the hard work they're doing. I want to thank our elections team uh, for the many late nights and, uh, and, and the stressful journey along the way to make sure that our democracy works for everyone. Um, as we wait out the remainder of the results in the coming days, I just want to urge folks to remember that we are Vermonters first uh, and political partisans second. And we should all be approaching these coming days uh, with love and grace towards our neighbors and uh, with faith that our democracy is strong. And if any of you have any uh, questions on uh, what we've seen so far and what we expect to see, happy to try and answer them. Yes? Sir, can you describe a little more why you think that tonight the presidential election results will not be um, sufficient to be calling that race? Is it just because you've seen polls that show it's very close? Or um, there's something more? Nope, certainly because we've seen uh, that there are a number of very important states that are going to be very close. Um, another reason why we may not see results tonight is because there are uh, states across the country that uh, allow the tallying of ballots that were postmarked by today. Now, of course, we are we have been reminding Vermonters for weeks that your ballot needs to be in the hands of your clerk by 7 p.m. on November 5th. Um, but for those postmark states, if it were a very close contest, uh, it could not be called until they've given the adequate amount of time for those postmark ballots to arrive. Those are a rarity, though, right? It is, it is relatively rare, but it happens to hit some close states, some highly contested states. Other questions? Related to that timeline that we might see, as we saw in 2020 as well, how are, are you and other election officials preparing for if potentially the former president 
claims um, election fraud or uh, that, that there's something nefarious happening. Uh, how, how are you preparing for that? So we have a very tight timeline, and it's laid out in statute for when we, uh, when we canvass the results and when we appoint our electors. Every state's timeline is a little bit different. Uh, but in every single state, um, folks are ready and prepared that if there is a, a, an official challenge to uh, some part of the election process, that those challenges will be expedited through the process in, their, in those states. Um, courts are, are at the ready and uh, understand that they need to be able to act quickly on any elections challenges. You know, this is, I guess, the second time that we've had a, a press conference sort of like this. Transparency, I think, is maybe fair to say there's been reporting that transparency is a big factor this year for election officials statewide. How do you, how do you assure Vermonters and, um, you know, drive the point home that our elections are safe, secure, free, et cetera? Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's important for Vermonters to understand that our election processes are open and public and transparent. Um, that uh, every single clerk will allow a place where, where citizens can watch the process as long as they're not uh, disrupting the process. And Vermonters should take advantage of that if they have never seen the tallying of votes at the end of the day, if they've never watched the checks and balances that go into making sure that uh, the, the voter who is on the checklist uh, is the voter who cast that ballot. Um, they should take advantage of that, and we are um, we are taking a posture of being as transparent as possible in uh, in offering information, and we will certainly pledge to give timely updates if there are any other uh, things that folks need to know. Um, transparency and education is key. A lack of information uh, can lead to people uh, falling prey to mis and disinformation. Sarah, can you discuss that first? batch of results that come through on the website. I, um, are those the mail-in ballots that have been run through a tabulator, or are they, is there some way we can describe the flow of new results as they come in through the state? Because that can that's one of the places that I think voters can get most confused. They don't really know what number of precincts really refers to, and um, can you try? So uh, what voters in Vermont should understand is that there are, no, uh, there are no results of any batch of ballots until after all of the ballots have been put through the tabulator. Uh, so while some communities allow for early in-person voting, which would allow someone to fill out their ballot and put it into the tabulator early, all communities are able to process the mailed or Dropbox ballots early into the tabulator, but there is no report that is generated out of that tabulator until all of the ballots have been put through the tabulator. So there's not a one set of results That's correct. right soon after 7 o'clock that reflects mailed-in ballots, for example, and then later there's in-person That's correct. Ballots. And, okay. it, you know, and I think um, are places where I think that happens. In previous elections, yeah. um, sometimes there will be exit polling that's happening where you're talking with the people who have voted in the polls and they're saying one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you put all the ballots together and look at what the actual results are, it, it comes out a little bit differently. Uh, you know, I don't think exit polling is an accurate way of, uh, of predicting who the winner will be uh, because the people who vote actually on election day in person are not all of the eligible registered voters in that community. And can you also speak to um, how some media are able to report results from individual polling places before your Secretary of State's website election results page has anything? Mm. For example, interesting. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Have you ever seen a delay yeah. between what media, like the Associated <clears throat> Press, can report versus what your website shows? Yes, yeah, I can speak to that. Uh, I know the the Associated Press has has stringers uh, sometimes out at at polling stations mm -hmm. and can can get reports uh, as they come off the tabulator machines uh, from you know from the town from the town clerks in Vermont. Elections are run at the at the local local level. So the town clerk is the presiding officer together with their board of, of civil authority. 
um, can provide that information. We do ask them <coughs> to enter the information into our system. Our system does does aggregate that information, as you spoke to. You asked about the precincts as well. So we have 283 uh, rep representative districts that that report, and so they they will come in as as the secretary said. Each of those districts won't be posted until their complete election night results is posted for, for all of that. But those you'll see those numbers go up from zero to 283 across statewide. And so for some races, if you're talking about a, a Senate race that's, that's many uh, representative districts, representative district being you know a town, there's the 247 cities and towns. And then some cities and towns have, have multiple representatives, as Burlington does. Mm -hmm. Other smaller towns might have multiple towns that are, share one state representative. So that's what the numbers are going up. They aren't uh, complete until all of those uh, 283 districts have, uh, have reported. But if you look to see who has reported, each one of those is complete reporting, as the Secretary said, not mail voting and then, and then same day voting. So in August, your office blamed some legacy software from the previous administration for some delays in reporting. Have you taken steps to, to limit those software issues tonight and tomorrow? Absolutely, yep. Um, and, and I think the way I would describe uh, what, what occurred in August was really um, a report writing error. You know, the, the basic data was all there and was accurate and double and triple checked. Um, but the report writing function, as Director Sheehan just described, some legislative districts include multiple towns, uh, some House districts overlap with Senate districts, and that, uh, that reporting uh, extraction was, uh, was not working. Uh, we have done significant work with our vendor who's maintaining our legacy system right now. Uh, we have done a dry run with uh, town and city clerks from across the state um, in order to check to make sure that uh, the fixes that they have done in the system um, are working correctly. And uh, as, as we did in August, uh, we could do again, which is to do a workaround if the, uh, if the report writing function uh, turns out to be uh, buggy again. Um, but we have all of that basic data to fall back on. The, uh, the data from across the state in all of the different precincts was accurate, and we can pull those reports manually if we need to. Any other questions? Yeah, can we just check? A, you said something 60 to 75 percent. Uh, was that early ballots? Was that mail in ballots? Was that overall turnout? Overall turnout. Um, you know, I. I, I Midday now, I would say that we're trending uh, much higher than the 60% mark. Um, and, you know, will we hit the high water mark of 2020? I doubt it, but, uh, but I would be thrilled if we did. Um, and so we're hoping that we get at least 70% turnout because Vermonters care very deeply about the future of our state and the future of our country. Can you remind us what the number was in 2020? The, it was uh, it was 370,000 votes were cast total. 73%. Uh, yeah, 73% of. You used a lot of big words describing the uh, the, the, the threats that they could happen uh, nationally. Could you run on those past me again? Yes. So DDoS attacks. That is a distributed denial of service attack. It's basically um, uh, trying to overwhelm a computer system or a phone system with uh, with multiple hits from uh, you know from computer generated uh, attacks that can come faster than the system has the ability to react to it. That can essentially cause an outage, uh, momentary outage, if um, if the system gets overwhelmed. Uh, swatting. Swatting is basically a fake 911 call saying that there's an emergency happening at some location. Uh, swatting attacks have been aimed at elections officials across the country um, and at other times at other statewide elected officials. Uh, these are meant to sow chaos and fear. Um, and, uh, and so we certainly are preparing for and expecting that that could happen. 
uh, bomb threats, either to polling locations or schools or um, Secretary of State's offices. Um, again, those might come through uh, by an electronic message. Those might come through by a phone call. Uh, bomb threats can come in any number of ways. Uh, that could certainly be a disruption to the time of polling and the work that we're bomb doing. Threat in the Northeast Kingdom yesterday, or at least reported by the cops, was that related to, uh, to, to polling places? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, foreign actors attempting to infiltrate our systems and cause delays or disruptions. Uh, we have been warned uh, repeatedly by our federal law enforcement partners that uh, there are foreign actors who, uh, who have a preference of who prevails in our presidential race and are attempting to infiltrate and sow chaos in order to cast doubt on the accuracy of the vote counting in our election. Uh, and I think it's important for folks to understand that elections officials have been aware of and preparing for these kinds of attacks uh, throughout 2024. And uh, we have contingencies in place to ensure that our votes are tallied accurately. Um, and so uh, if you hear stories about malicious attacks or attempts by foreign actors or domestic actors to disrupt our, disrupt our elections, just please know that we have been planning for and preparing for this, um, and we have contingencies in place to cover those inevitabilities. Uh, any other big words that I haven't yet explained? That's pretty good. Okay. Thank you. To be clear, though, there's no reports of any of those four disruption attempts so far today? So far today? Not to my knowledge. Or leading up to today, past weeks? Correct. Okay. You also mentioned um, town clerks are urging people to bring your ballots. They said they're concerned about running out. Have yes. any polling places run out of ballots? Uh, not to my no. knowledge. No. Um, there, there are ways that clerks can create uh, additional ballots if they need to. Our accessible voting system, uh, which allows people who might have uh, a mobility or accessibility issue uh, to use an assistive device and print the ballot there at the polling place, um, that can always be used to create a ballot that will be able to be read um, by the tabulator. In addition to that, any ballots that were sent out uh, that came back to the clerk as undeliverable are also ballots that the clerk could, uh, could use in order to provide ballots to voters in person today. But BYOB, please, saves resources. Any other questions? How soon do you expect to start actually populating the website tonight? Like 7.01, 7.30? I think it's usually 7.15 to 7.20 before the first communities who, um, who can push go on that tabulator are ready to start entering. Um, you know, the clerks like to double and triple check that the readout that comes from the tabulator matches what they have on their paper uh, list of who has voted. And so those results will begin to trickle in a little after 7 and will continue probably until 11 o'clock. <laughs> and can you explain again why when all the polls close at 7 o'clock yeah. and some of the results come in at 7.10, 7.15, 7.20, we don't have results from other polling places until 11, 11.30 or later. Hopefully it's not that yeah. late. But yeah. yeah. So there's really two, two reasons. One, so we talk about pushing the button on the tabulator. That's for the towns that use tabulators, so towns that have at least 1,000 residents use tabulators. They have fewer than 1,000 residents, they're, they're allowed to, to not use a tabulator, to be a hand, hand count, which can take, can take more time, is, is the first reason. The second reason is, depending on if the town's uh, Board of Civil Authority uh, voted to start processing ballots, early, early voted ballots, prior to Election Day, uh, those towns would have fed them into the, the tabulator. As we've talked about, they don't know what the votes were, they don't know the results, but they're ahead of the game as far as feeding them into the tabulator. They're more likely to be those folks that are done around 7:15. If they didn't vote that way and they're feeding all of the ballots uh, into the machine, you know, after the the polls close, then that could be another another reason that they could be could be later. So it's it's really a mix of um, of reasons across there. Any other questions? All right, we're in good hands. Um, 
Uh, now that you've shut the cameras off, I will tell you that um, I read somewhere that we are in uh, this miraculous uh, no man's land period of time where calories don't count and nobody will judge you for cracking open a beer in the middle of the day. So have fun, hold tight, your elections are in good hands, and uh, we'll see you all uh, in a week for Canvas of the Results. That's right. This next Tuesday? Next Tuesday, 10, 10 o'clock. What does that look like? At the State House. At the State House. Can yes. you have to walk me through that in 30 seconds, how that looks like? Sure, absolutely. So we'll have the, the state uh, committees there from each of the three major major parties. Right. Um, we will have uh, certificates to, to certify the result for the statewide offices, and um, we'll, we'll announce those results, the official mm -hmm. uh, results, vote, vote tallies for, for each, of the, uh, each of the candidates, mm -hmm. and, and we'll sign those, those certifications. At that same time, 10 o'clock next Tuesday are also when the representative canvasses and the, the Senate canvas uh, and, and county canvas are also happening around the state simultaneously. So there'll be, be many canvases next next Tuesday, but the statewide ones are right here at the, at the State House at, at 10 a.m. And importantly, you will need a media pass to come into the State House on that day. Should we want to watch the Should you want to watch process? the certification Live. process? Live. Mm. It's going to be riveting. Riveting. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you all so much for coming out. Thanks. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good job. Good job. Yes. You guys have election observers? Yeah. Yes,